Hi there, this is Scott Oshman with the Always Off Brand Podcast. And Brent Peterson here and Talk Commerce and I, we did this episode together. And you're about to hear the cool, the easy Philip Jackson with Future Commerce. And boy, did these guys do a heck of a job with shopware. They released this big, killer, unbelievable report on RFPs. It's sensational. And to get just a little bite, a taster teaser, we had a great conversation with Philip Jackson from Future Commerce. Appreciate you listening. And if you feel like it, you know, get on over to that stream. Check out Always Off Brand. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts. Enjoy this one. Great conversation with Philip Jackson with Future Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, oh my freaking goodness. Philip from Future Commerce. You don't need a last name. That's true. Well, Phil Jackson was a hard name to have in the I 90s. Think Winkle's, yeah. Winkle's better. The triangle offense. You want, okay, hold on, Brent. Um, uh, wait, wait, hold on. Scott Austin, Brent Peterson. That's right. Phil Talk Jackson commerce. from Top. Talk future commerce, commerce, Future Commerce, always off brand. And my new podcast is always on brand. <laughs> it's such horse shit that he says that to me. <laughs> it's just, it's mean. Is it not, Philip? It's the mo- that's a very Brent coded thing sort of <laughs> to say. <laughs> um, I think uh, he's ordering. By the way, he's ordering. He's he's off mic. I'll have one of everything. Thank you. If uh, if I may, I'm starting to believe in synchronicity. Mm. Um, I know that that's sort of a weird and woo woo thing to say in these circles. Like synchronized swimming, synchronicity. What are you talking no, about? Synchronicity. You know, like the song from the Police. Oh yes, um, synchronicity. Great. Yeah. Have you ever heard a band like that since Police? Seriously, no one is. A, I'm, I say this all the time. He has Brent. a new song out too. No, Sting does? Yeah, Sting just put out a new song. Fantastic. Back no, to your synchronicity. Sense. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, synchronicity. It's like uh, when, when you start to notice things that sort of are aligning in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm experiencing that a lot lately. This are is you? one of those things. I know. I just met you co- last month at E-Tail. Yep. Was, I know of you. It's like a, I'm like a fanboy, and I got to meet you guys in live person, you and Brian. for 14 years. Mutual, hey, it's the Mutual Admiration Society. So much it respect is, for you guys. You know what's too. so funny? We were at this dinner with a bunch of other people who don't pod, and we go into this complete equipment, software, nerd pod talk across this poor woman who wasn't even yeah. in the conversation. Not even in the conversation. We're just talking across it. Also, she worked for Sweetwater. Yes. So you would think that she'd know more about the equipment. Well, she told me this mic I'm on is the number one seller. Yeah, it's That's true. All. It's true. Well, it turns out anything that you put at the top of the page becomes the number really? one seller. Yeah. Fascinating. In a billion-dollar brand, you can work? change yeah. what. Yeah. That's e-commerce genius right there. Yeah. There you go. Come to me for all the so merchandising wait, Philip, tips. What is the newest, greatest future commerce? You, got, you, got the, you guys are the content just dynamos over there. Uh, we have a new report that we're talking about here. Uh, I'll be up in a minute to talk about it here at the show, but it's called The Honest Truth. And we're I talking about that. the least exciting subject in all of e-commerce, RFPs. Oh, all right. uh, hit me. Really I, freaking painful. Yeah. Um, yes. is what it stands I just yeah. got a preview of it, and it's very yeah. interesting. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. So our whole uh, take on this is that it, there's the unspoken truth, and then there's the honest truth. We all know that it's a bit of a charade, right? 100%. It's, and um, we're going to, we broke it down. And we actually talked to people, uh, 100 merchants who are software buyers in procurement, and we talked to dozens of agency leaders about, like, what is it they expect out of an RFP, and what do they say, and what do they actually mean? And those things are very, very far apart. My friend, <laughs> I like how I like how you had you, you had your merchant or or buyer point of view in there. Yeah, I think that's great because Thank I you. I do feel as though and I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing, but I feel like they already know who they're going to go with in advance. So and they just put it out there for whatever. Yeah, uh, well, you know, definitely not to make things go faster. So there's yeah. that, right? But um, yeah. I, I'm right. In, Oh, I'm in the middle of this in several times in my life because I've just been around a long time. Oh, yeah. And so I get hired to basically part of my scope, if you want to call it that or whatever, is to go find the right agency fit. Mm. And so I'm kind of knee deep in this. So this is fascinating to me. And I haven't read the report. I got the, I got the what's up that it was coming out today at this mm-hmm. big Shoptoberfest. I'm excited about this. I, I, I'm excited about it, too. It is the most sexy, most exciting way to talk about the least exciting topic on planet Earth. Um, so, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's really interesting. There's a lot of data in there. We could get into it. But, I, you know, I think you could also just read it for yourself. Uh, futurecommerce.com slash honest truth. 
Yeah, I think it's great, and so I, I have to know, I have to ask because I, I I think it's super cool that you've done this. We're almost like, out of where, time, Brent. <laughs> where did you? Where Where was the like? Why did you do it? Like RFP is the most unsexy thing in the whole world. Because I think and it it's is so needed. What you've done? Uh, because I think it's also uh, the last vestige of a middleman that we have left in this business, where everything else has gone direct. And uh, there's also a it is probably the most susceptible to AI disruption. Uh, what we found is that third-party agencies that proctor RFPs are already using AI in that process, and a lot of the AI responses from merchant or, uh, from agencies are being run via AI as well. Yeah. So we're already there. It's just that those two systems aren't talking to each other. And what happens in the future, and this is really kind of where we end things in the report. Don't is, give it all away, Philip. No, I mean, but I, I think Lord. there's a lot in there in, sandwiched in the middle, right? There is, there's a creamy center. Okay. Um, but at the, at the other side of it is we don't really need people in the middle of these uh, processes talking back and forth to each other. We could actually go deeper if we had a greater, if we had a way of connecting business needs to fulfilling those needs I think that agencies could probably pitch at a greater scale in a marketplace. I think that well, uh, I think that software companies could find more customers through uh, through agencies if this were more automated. So we kind of theorize where that's going to go. Yeah, and I've been pitched. I've already been pitched for RFPs for for my company. Yeah, to do content. AI. How come? That, how come you mentioned that like seven times <laughs> already? This is sponsored by Shopware. <laughs> um, I, I've already that. been pitched by AI companies that are that are sending you. RFPs that they are going to then do the RFP for you with their I, AI and yeah. send it off for for to you get to but get I, more business. This is so self, I don't know, obnoxious. People come to me because I know most of the people in the Amazon space. I've been sure, around sure. Amazon for a long. I know yeah. a lot of the agency owners. I know every. I am a former agency owner of Amazon stuff, and we have weaknesses and strengths. Period. And what I'm trying to do is my goal is to put the agency and the manufacturer brand, whatever, and so it's a happy, happy. Everybody wins. But yeah. I have to do that, but I have to really know exactly what all the, all the ugly wires are behind if you peel the wall, you know? The, the, sure. So I guess this is, I don't know where I'm landing in this, but I, I like, hopefully I'm out, add value of finding the right fit. It is dating though, isn't this all come down to dating, Philip? It is. It's a form of dating. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, I, I think RFPs is a different form of dating. It's it's mm. a really I know it's vanilla, a major horrible vanilla. So, form so of dating. I, it's more I, of I an arranged marriage. Yes, yeah, okay, about it. okay. Indian right. form of dating. Yeah. And, and I, I haven't read it and don't know shit. But let's just cut to the crap. I mean, basically, is it a who you know, not what you know situation? Is it a people thing? Uh, well, I could give you the data points. The gist is is that nobody trusts anybody in the process. Boom. And so when if it is who you know, then, you know, uh, I was talking to Jason earlier, and he's like, you shouldn't trust any agency partner that doesn't have multiple horses in the barn, right? Like, we need you need someone who can give you good advice, not based solely on pre-existing relationships. Yeah. But I think that there's also a, a potential future where... The, the capabilities of developing for multiple platforms is also becoming easier because software yeah. is making that more efficient. And you could say AI, you could say it's not AI. Um, so I don't know. We're, I think we're at, I'm trying to capture this particular moment in time. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Well needed. Anyway, enough about that. No, it's okay. Anything else on future commerce we need to plug, promote, uh, Always. Pump? Well, we have a, a summit coming up in Los Angeles. Ooh. Um, October 10th. Thank you. Wow. Gosh, you're so on top of that, Brent. That's scary. Um, and I'd love for people to come. Uh, but uh, let me give you a two-second thing about it. You can get more than two. We'll give you 27 seconds. Yeah, so we're talking about the uh, <laughs> how pop culture has become participatory. 100%. Um, and so the future of entertainment is actually the future of commerce. Those things are coming closer together. And uh, we have some rad folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I forgot that you have this stuff. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to have you play me on. Yeah. Um, long story short, uh, the folks who create all of the AI uh, documentary film footage for Sora, which is uh, OpenAI's project, uh, video project, is, is a uh, film production company called Shy Kids. 
Uh, Shy Kids will be coming and talking about the future of content Guys creation. Are so hip. Um, and we've, Jesus. Yeah, we've got some really sa- sick. If I could be yeah. a quarter as hip. Yeah. As you and Brian in Future Commerce. Yeah. Grime, Grimes is manager. Elon's ex-wife. Uh, Grimes' manager is coming Shit. to uh, come talk to us a little bit about stuff. Uh, head of UTA's fine arts division. I um, read that in yeah. your thing. Yeah. That is big time. It's cool. Well, it it's is not true. big time. It's no, it is big time. big time. But, you're, the, but it's point, the point is so captivating to me because I'm a big sports guy and it's the same thing. All of a sudden, celebrity has harnessed brand. I mean, my daughter, my 24-hour, she's obsessed with the Kardashians. I've watched all this stuff. And say what you want, okay? (laughs) I'm not judging or whatever. Those women have done a hell of a job of turning celebrity into massive, massive revenue. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, they're, they're deft business people. Like they you are. have to give it to them. But mm-hmm. this flip, yeah. this flip of control and leverage, we mm. talk about creators and content creators now having the leverage. It's the same thing. Celebrity, sports celebrity in the United States or all around the world now have leverage. They run the table. They don't need agents. They don't need yeah. distributors and all these other facets. Yeah. They actually can control the brand and get in ownership. We, uh, on the way over here, I needed to get batteries. Yeah, hit the Yes. Notes. There you go. No. <laughs> That's some applause for you. I love that. I'll take it. Okay. So you need to get batteries. Had to get batteries. Had to get batteries. batteries. Uh, let's not talk about the inflation of batteries. Six AAA batteries, $24 at I mean, Target in New York City. We are in New York City. Yeah, yeah but, and then I went to Target, which is the dumbest thing you could possibly do. <laughs> um, but so I'm at Target. I'm going to buy these batteries. thing that really took me by surprise is there's you have the video game aisle, right? You have televisions on the back wall. Yeah. And then you have two aisles of electronics, and the sign above it says "Content Creator Tools." And I, I think that we're at this is at Target. This is at Target. Okay. Not Target, New York City. I don't. I don't know that Target, West Palm Beach, Florida, <laughs> has two aisles of content creator and content, right? But content creation is kind of an incumbent on all of us to take part in. Like it is. It is truly an economy unto itself. Now, the creator economy, I think, is a little overblown. I agree. Right, but. We're all we're all participating in it in some way, right? Hi. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're here at Shoptoberfest. I mean, are we? Sponsored by Shopware. <laughs> That's a new drinking game. <laughs> by the way, I got to get some food or else yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, podcast go. is going to get real funny. I think we're already there. Real yes. funny. <laughs> I'm a lightweight by nature. Love it. I, pre- I appreciate you giving me uh, a moment on the mic. Good Why? to see you, Brent. Sp- yeah. Love you. I Miss can't you. explain this. I mean, Brent's got the video going, but you people, this is like Radio Road against Podcast Row. I am, I am, I am so thrilled with this setup. Thank yeah. you to Jason, the the president. Is he the president? See, what, what's yeah. his title? President GM of America. GM of America. America's America's GM now. <laughs> Scott is incredibly good at accents, by the way. Yeah. He does a if you need mean, any. and I, Philip has been to Fargo. He's been all over. Yeah, oh, I've been, he, I've been, he, he I've been everywhere, man. I've been I think everywhere, they're actually calling man. me. I'm yeah, gonna, okay. I'm going to go Philip, check on it. Love fantastic. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Future bye. Commerce. Future Philip Commerce. Jackson if you're not, future, future Commerce. If you're not listening, <laughs> reading, um, listening, I don't by know what else. I haven't eaten since 8 a.m. either. I had, this, I had this bar from the Delta Sky Lounge. How about that Philip Jackson, though? Can That's we fantastic. do a little wrap-up here? Yes, let's do it. Do guys have created, a, a, I think, really, in our space, a true media company? Yes, in the show notes, we'll put his report. The show nuts? Show notes. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> Bye-bye. This is Brent from Talk Commerce, and I want to introduce you to the future of e-commerce, Shopware.com. Shopware isn't just keeping up with the times, they're defining them. As one of the first platforms to integrate AI into the core, Shopware now offers dozens of AI-powered features to supercharge your success. But that's not all. Shopware is pioneering the next frontier of online shopping, spatial commerce. Imagine allowing your customers to interact with your products in 3D or use augmented reality to see how items look in their own space. This isn't science fiction. It's happening right now with Shopware. We're talking about 3D product visualization, virtual showrooms, and immersive shopping experiences that blur the line between digital and physical. The results? Increased customer engagement, fewer returns, and a competitive edge that puts you light years ahead. Shopware is seeing up to a 200% increase in customer engagement, 
and a 70% fewer returns rate with these technologies. Whether you're in B2B or B2C, Shopware's spatial commerce features are a game changer. From streamlining complex product sales to creating innovative metaverse business models, the possibilities are endless. Don't let your e-commerce strategy get left behind. Step into the future with Shopware.com. Visit shopware.com today and discover how AI and spatial commerce can transform your business. Talk Commerce is a production of Content Basis, LLC. For more creative content, go to contentbasis.io.